Hello everyone, this is Hoda Ganji and in this video I'm going to give you a quick tour about how Revit interface works. So this is the home page of Revit. Starting from the top, you see the version here, but that's not the complete version. The complete version is actually, if you go here, go to about Autodesk Revit 2023, your actual version of Revit is the number which is here. So this matters sometimes. Okay. Uh, you see here that I have already signed in. Uh, so if you see that's empty, you can sign into your organization through there. Uh, there is some help menus there and so on. On the left side here, you can access a new model or a new family or open a new model or family. Uh, recent files are here. Autodesk docs are here. It only works if you already have access to uh, Autodesk uh, Cloud or BIM 360. Uh, different projects that you have been involved with all list up here uh, and you can open a new file from here. For today I'm just going to open a new model. I'll go with new model and if you don't find all your templates here go to browse and you see that we have default metric. Default metric is a good template and you see it's under program data Okay, so it's under program data, Autodesk, RVT 2023, or whichever version you have, templates, English. So I'll go with this file and open it as a project. In order for a Revit file to have its own capabilities, it has to be a project. Uh, saving a file as a project template, it's going to limit its capabilities unless you really want to make a new template out of a project. Otherwise, go with project, hit OK. In case you want to have two files open, two Revit files at the same time, just go back to Home menu. You can open another one. So through going to the Home menu and through this arrow, you can go back and forth between the open project and other projects. These are your menus here. In case you accidentally minimize them and it looks like this, don't panic. Just click on uh, this arrow here and you see we have options to go with uh, only titles here. Uh, you can try other ones too. I would prefer to actually click here and go with show full ribbon, see everything. That's the best, right? Uh, on the left side, you see properties menu and then project browser. Let's say you accidentally close both of them. Don't worry, we can always bring them back. It's related to what you see. So within the tabs up here, I'm gonna go to view. It's related to the user interface, so it's gonna be here. You can always bring them back. For properties, in addition to clicking the box here, you can also just type double P. Double P brings back the properties or removes it. And for project browser, you can just click here. It will come back. We'll talk about uh, what's in project browser in just a little bit. When you open a Revit file before anything else, it's good to set your units. UN is a shortcut for units. I'll show you where the shortcuts are. Usually in architectural models, we go with millimeters and no decimals. Sometimes it's also fine to go with meters and three decimal places. Why when it's on millimeters, we don't go with more precise than millimeters? Because we cannot really measure a value is smaller than one millimeter on site. If you are designing a Revit family, that's okay. You might be going with uh, more precision because you have different tools to measure it. But for a regular project, architectural or interior design, we usually go with uh, no smaller than one millimeter. Uh, there are units for other stuff here too. If you are uh, an electrical engineer or if you want to do something for uh, energy or HVAC systems, see that there are other things there. For now, I'll leave the rest, but you see there are other units here. I'll go with OK. But let's quickly see some menus here. So all your architectural tools are here. Uh, we'll start working with them soon, so you'll get a better 
understanding walls doors windows and so on uh, search our models are here uh, see that I might have some menus that you don't have that's fine like this V-Ray one I have installed V-Ray plugin or uh, this other one uh, but the rest of the menus you should be able to see them as well uh, if you want to insert any type of file it's under here a lot of 2D items are here if you just want to uh, annotate something or create some 2D objects you can just work on it uh, using annotate menu detail items we'll work with massing and site storing from next session and uh, under manage tab there are some general things like all the materials which you have used in your files object styles how you want your different lines to look like you can locate your project here and so on the view tab here also somehow relates to your project browser here so uh, for instance if i just draw something i want to draw a wall i went to architecture wall i'm going to use this rectangle to draw some walls right see right now we have floor plans ceiling plans elevations and so on as soon as i add something from the view menu such as section as soon as i create it it will be added as a tab over there so if you want to go to the section that we just created you can double click here it will go to the view or you can go through the section right now you see legends are empty schedules are empty sheets are empty for each of these items you can just right click here and go with new legend new sheet uh, new schedule or all of them can be accessed also through the menus up here and there are even more things up here okay revisions are here uh, you saw the sheets over there if you can also click here to create a new sheet same with the schedules you can get the sheet list here whatever you create uh, by going through the menus let's say i just want to create a sheet list and uh, count them whatever you add there it will be also be added to the right part in the project browser okay for now i'm going to close this um, I'm going to tell you about some of the interesting and practical shortcuts for today as well. Uh, for instance, one of the good ones is WT versus TW. WT is great when you want to add something. Let's say you just want to put something here. And at the same time, you want to see how it looks like in a different view. So it's WT versus TW. How do you know the shortcuts? They are under view, user interface, keyboard shortcuts. You might memorize all of them, but it might be hard at the beginning. So as we go on, I'll let you know about the important ones to memorize. RP or reference plane is very practical. Uh, DI is for dimension. Uh, in AutoCAD, it's usually DIM for dimension. In, in Revit, it's DI. TL switches between thin lines and thick lines. Uh, visibility graphics is VG or double V. I'll let you know about the ones that you need as we go on. Tab views and tile views is something that I definitely suggest that you memorize. Um, okay, UN, that's what we used a little bit uh, before. UN is for project units okay now let's also see a little bit of this stuff which is down here uh, this one the first one is scale you don't need to worry about drawing in a scale it will automatically uh, adjust the scale when you change it from here the second one is about how much details you're going to show in a wall like this it doesn't matter but if i had used a wall with separate layers it's going to show you different whether you go with coarse level of details medium or fine as you guess fine will give you the most level of details uh, in scales like 1 to 500 or 1 to 200 you might just go with coarse 
1 to 500 is usually for site plan, right? But as soon as you get to 1 to 100, especially when you get to 1 to 20 or so on, it's, it's a great idea to include more level of details. So go with fine level of details. The second thing here is visual style. You can go with shaded, realistic. Realistic is going to kind of show how it's going to even render. Uh, sometimes this will give you some nice visuals. And wireframe. Wireframe is good when you have several objects on top of each other. You want to select one of them or so. Uh, but in usual drafting, if it's not going to be uh, colored or something, you can leave it on hidden line. That's more common based on what you want to do. Everything that you create at the same time is also created in 3D. And all those things that we talked about also apply here. So I can go with more uh, details here. I can go with shaded view or something or realistic to see how it's going to look like. We can talk about sun pass and shadows uh, later. This one is for rendering. Uh, another thing which might be very useful is the crop region, which is this one. What is crop region? This rectangle is crop region. Let's say for whatever reason, I just want to show only this wall when I want to draw a wall section, right? So this is the crop region. If I say do not crop view, it will show everything even if you have a crop region. Uh, if you crop it, you only see this part and the rectangle around it, you can hide it or not by going through uh, this show or hide crop region. Okay, uh, now next thing I want to show you is how to hide something temporarily versus how to hide something permanently. If you select the wall or something, anything, then go to temporary hide isolate. I can hide this element. If I want to bring it back, I need to go to reset temporary hide. Now you see that this is kind of like blue highlighted. I can reset it. Now this is temporary hide. What does it mean? It means if I close the project and open it right now, next time I open it, it will not be hidden. It will be reset. If you want something to be permanently hidden, you need to click on it, right click, hide in view element. If I hide in view category, it will hide all the category of walls. For now, if I go with hide element, then it's going to be permanently hidden means when you open your Revit next time, it will still be hidden. Sometimes that's what you want. In order to bring back hidden objects, you can go to this next item, which is reveal hidden elements. You see it has a pink uh, frame here. You can select the object, right click on hiding view element. Uh, I'm going to show you one last shortcut here. Maybe if you click on this and you want to hide this wall temporarily, as I said, you can go with hide element or the shortcut for it is HH. I can select this type HH. It will temporarily hide something and I can bring it back from here. This is another very useful shortcut in Revit. Uh, in case you are a good CAD user and you go between different software, you can insert either import or link other computer aided design files see that not only you can import DWG, which is usually used for AutoCAD, you can import from uh, SketchUp.skp, uh, .3DM, which is Rhino files, uh, OBJ, uh, and SAT are also some practical 3D files, STL, and so on. Uh, in addition to importing from other software, you can also insert or import uh, images. The reason you see that this is now uh, grayed out is that we are in a 3D view. If I go to level and volume something, you see that we can import images, PDF files, point cloud files, uh, and so on. To save your file, you can go with file, save or save as, 
uh, when you go with save as you see that you can save your project as a project that's what we usually do in case this project is going to be used as your basic template you can save it as a template but otherwise just be careful just save it as a project which means it's going to be dot rvt uh, you can just save the project, something that you know, and under options, I'll go with one or two or three, and then I'll make save as as required. Okay, so this setting is under options. If you leave it on 20, you cannot change this later. You need to make a save as and then make it a lower number. Uh, okay, and okay, and now if i close this file you, if you close you can just close the tabs one by one or better than that you can just go with file close if you open too many tabs here you want to get rid of some of them you can go with this icon here close in active views so you just see the active view and now we can close the file it will show under recent files here and i can open it again so this was just a short video to introduce Revit. I hope you enjoy working with it. I for sure have enjoyed Revit uh, so much in the past 13 years or so. Uh, thank you so much. Please like and subscribe for more videos.